Temple. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is, uh, these are earnings that uh, are not really so exciting. But, but take us through the market wrap for the final trading day of July. Good morning, Bosin. Thank you for joining us right here. Yes, as you said, a lot of earnings are not looking so good. And that ended up impacting on the uh, various sectors that we have in the market. Only a few companies, you know, actually met the expectations of, uh, of a lot of or the desires, as you see, of some investors and traders in the market. Uh, yesterday, uh, in the market, we lost some 50.71 billion naira. We saw a situation where the year-to-date uh, returns of the market actually expanded further to some 11.81 percent. And of course, uh, the all share index now settled at 27,718.26. Uh, declining by some 0.37 percent yesterday. Having lost some 50 billion naira plus yesterday, uh, the equity capitalization settled at 13.50 trillion naira. Of course, you've got uh, improvements in the activity level given the losses, and of course, the reaction of investors to some of those negative numbers that we're seeing in the market. Uh, volume of activities, volume of transactions yesterday expanded, expanded by some 62.31 percent, in spite of the fact that the downtrend. Uh, also dipped further as we saw value of those transactions coming in at coming in 85.13 percent uh, higher. That's at 4.12 billion naira uh, yesterday in the market, and of course total uh, number of deals we had was just 3,937, which explains the fact that. Uh, we're seeing more bearish sentiment in the market, in spite of the fact that the market breadth yesterday was at par. We had just 20 gainers and 20 losers in the market, led by uh, the gainers were led by uh, Julius Berger, and the losers uh, chart was actually led by uh, University Press, uh, which is, of course, an academy or a publishing company uh, here in the market. If we look at the uh, sectoral front, we got gains across two uh, indices of the market. The banking sector was positive by some 0.71 percent. You got Wemma Bank. Investors still reacting uh, somehow to Wemma Bank, given the uh, impressive performance declared by that company. Uh, Jai's Bank experienced some 7.14 percent gains, and of course, Access Bank also made some gains uh, in the market. That all of that put together impacted positively on the indices of the market. If you look at the consumer goods side of the market, uh, Boston, you hinted earlier about uh, Dangote flour, Dangote sugar not looking too good uh, when investors came and looked at those numbers it wasn't impressive enough for them to put their money on so they sold off on these two key companies Nigerian breweries to continue to uh, bask in the euphoria of its losses uh, Nestle on its own part has actually delivered some gains enough for some investors who had actually taken advantage of the 1230 250 naira uh, price that they saw it a few weeks ago so it was an opportunity for them to take a, to quickly take profit uh, yesterday when the markets uh, opened and they saw that Nestle was trendy, trading as 1,310 naira. That's the situation that led to uh, a decline of 2.27% on Nestle yesterday in the markets. If you take a look at what's happening in the industrial goods side of the market and insurance, these two key sectors were really positive yesterday, uh, thanks to some positive earnings coming in from some of those companies that you have there. But the oil and gas is still negative. In spite of a 10% gain that we saw on Forte Oil owing to the positive numbers uh, that came in some 5 billion naira plus declared in top line uh, at Forte Oil. Uh, we weren't able to close that segment of the market in the positive territory. Although that uh, performance of Forte Oil actually moderated the losses that we had uh, on that side. So this takes us to the energy markets where you, if you look at the numbers, corn oil is negative, Forte Oil was positive, uh, a host of other companies there are negative. Uh, o and Do uh, was at 3.9% 3, uh, down yesterday, uh, trading at 3 naira 70 kobo now. Uh, eternal Oil was down further yesterday, all the way from 3 naira 35 kobo, so it tells you that it went on, on, on offer yesterday. Uh, the USI of the NAS, the OTC, was positive yesterday, up some 0.23%. You got some gains there. Uh, volume of transaction was just 30.79 million, valued at 9.69 million naira. You got four securities traded out of the 38 companies or securities tradable on that platform.
uh, quickly to the fixed income market uh, where things were a bit mixed yesterday in terms of the uh, uh, bonds market. Uh, bonds, we saw a little bit of bearish tilt in spite of the uh, mixed trading sentiment we had there. Slight uh, yields was actually uh, up yesterday uh, by one basis point, uh, or even though we saw a bit of renewed interest at the longer end of the curve where you see investors uh, you know, going for uh, the likes of 2036 paper, the April 2037 paper, uh, these two key papers, for example, uh, were actually at 13.75% uh, uh, of yield before now. Uh, but yesterday, what we saw was 13.71% of the yield, and that shot up the prices uh, of these uh, key securities, these bonds, or the markets yesterday. That's the secondary side of the markets. Uh, yesterday, for the Treasury bill side of the markets, where uh, things were a bit uh, bearish as well. Uh, we saw that the CBN actually had a bi-weekly uh, primary market auction yesterday, some 223 billion naira uh, worth of bills uh, you know, were offered yesterday across the 91-day, 182-day, and 364-day day to maturity papers. Of course, the stop rates uh, came a, a bit, uh, of course, was moderate. 91-day, uh, for example, was a 9.75%. Uh, but if you look at the secondary side of the market, uh, given the PMA that held, uh, system liquidity, of course, was at 254 billion naira. So that gave a reason for uh, some kind of lackluster performance, mixed performance, if you like, at the secondary side of the market yesterday, where we saw uh, rates inching higher by a bi one business point, actually, Boson. It's quite a lot to chew. The market is a little bit heavy uh, with all the numbers. Thank you so much. We'll get back to you. Uh, later on the show, uh, more importantly around those earnings. Medview uh, uh, is still flying, but his earnings is not really flying. Anything like that, it's been a very tough first half of the year for these listed uh, companies just a few years on the Nigerian market. L let's talk a bit about this later on, on the show and how the market is also reacting, if anything, to MTN's uh, confirmation that the central bank has issued it a financial services, a fintech license, they got one in, the, in their book pocket. Now they're looking for another one. It says they want another license. It uh, looks like this is not just a telco, but it's becoming a bank moving forward, technically speaking. Let's look about that later. Temple, thank you so much. Finally, with Temple Ashaju, uh, business correspondent uh, from the trading floor at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, Temple, welcome back to the program. Let's wrap this up together. Uh, uh, of course, uh, majorly with MTN announcing uh, the uh, security of that uh, license, uh, tel uh, uh, fintech license from Central Bank and still asking for more, another license. This is locking Broad Street down. Well, yes, Bosun, I think all of this will just put investors waiting for, uh, in a position that will get them waiting for the IPO of uh, this particular company, MTN, because again, the uh, uh, issue of free floats is still a major concern to a lot of traders. Uh, so, uh, it's basically the, the fact that they've given some key updates, two or three updates now since they got listed in May, uh, it's still pushing a lot of investors in the waiting line, kind of to see what will happen in terms of the IPA, because that is when it will create room for a lot of investors, traders here to be able to participate in the gains of uh, MTN in the market. But as I hinted earlier, the fact that they've gotten this license, the full license now, because recall again, they've been doing the pilot phase since they got the license, they secured the license uh, on, in December 2018, that's December last year. Uh, since now they've gotten the full license, uh, investors will just basically want to see how that will uh, pan out, so preparatory towards the uh, IPO, which is what they are looking to see how it will create room for them to actually come on board, participating more on the gains and shares of MTN in the market. Yes, uh, Tempo, let's talk about something else uh, uh, that is just coming through uh, in the news uh, from the U.S. that because folks are now growing beards and they are not shaving regularly, the razor industry is uh, suffering because they said men with beards are killing the razor industry. According to this new report, the razor industry, because folks don't shave regularly, uh, is now down about 11%. Gillette is taking $8 billion right down, mainly because folks are not buying razor blades, uh, the shaving stick, as much as they used to. Uh, you see a lot of young folks and, and even uh, older folks on, on our streets uh, everywhere these days with beards. 
I am not one. I, I, I'm, I'm contributing to the razor industry. Basically, I shave every day. <laughs> I'm poor. Okay. So whatever Put it whatever the that means for the foreign market. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I really don't know. But if you check, I'm also wearing my afro. So <laughs> perhaps I contribute to one of the reasons why for this data, actually, or these statistics. That you're you know, very, 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 very interesting. In relation to the market, I don't know. But you know, you know when, when you know if you have more folks growing well, beards, well, even that, in Nigeria, uh, that means they'll be buying less uh, 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 shaving yeah, stick. Yeah. That's what it means. So if we check, maybe we need to check the import of razor blades into Nigeria for shaving sticks for men, because uh, most folks don't. You say a lot of folks, don't, everybody's going beards these days. Very interested, and the companies that produce this razor are now complaining. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. Brooks and Gamble is complete. Well, you've got you, 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 you've, you've got a whole you, you, you've got climate change happening everywhere. Uh, in some places, it's getting hot. In some places, it's getting cold. Perhaps, uh, besides the fashion, uh, you also want to keep the beards just to keep warm. I don't know. Maybe that's the maybe that's a, a reason for the trend in a way. Is is a fashion? Is a new fashion? This the world, isn't it? Well, it is. It is the way. I mean, my cameraman right here is actually wearing beds too. So I wish you could hold the camera uh, and show his face. Are wearing beds. You've yeah, got the, the director the, right there in the, the MCR. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the one behind the camera right here in the headquarters is also <laughs> sporting a beard. So, so they are the ones contributing to the decline in the global razor well, that's industry. That's it. Right? <laughs> Very interesting. How fashion <laughs> and change. Where to the, go, boss? Where yeah, to go? The, 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 the world is changing. The world is changing, and, and it looks like once you have a new trend or whatever, then you have some businesses taking... And so, you know, what has happened to the regular cameras? With the, now we have the smartphones that can take pictures, selfies, and all of that. Uh, and folks hardly buy the regular cameras anymore. So it's looking like razor blade is the next one. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, perhaps. But then again, uh, mostly, but you know that these days uh, folks actually use Flipa for uh, shaving and, of course, uh, cutting the hair. Uh, so it's not so much of a razor. Uh, I think it's more of uh, the blades for the, uh, for the, for the, for the barbers. Uh, perhaps, of course, it relates to aluminium and uh, some of those other materials uh, used in the composition of such uh, 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 materials made that actually uh, are put together to make up a clipper and all of that. Uh, so, um, well, I should also say that uh, uh, <laughs> one of the companies that produces aluminium here, First Aluminium, is actually officially been delisted yesterday in the stock ex from the stock exchange. Uh, perhaps it also relates to this issue. No, 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 no. I know that we no, use aluminium. No, 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 no. First, alu first aluminium uh, here is just about the household utensils, the fry pan, the ports, and things like that, and all of that. But I this one, this one about Jillian, I think, I think razor yeah. blade is on its way out, one way or the other. Uh, uh, well, I pity Gillette, Bukta and Gamble, and other makers. Thank you so much, Tempo. It's been nice having maybe, you on the show maybe. today. <laughs> yeah, I, I have another maybe. shave tomorrow. I need to keep those guys alive in business uh, before they run out. Thank you so much. Have your daily shave, everyone. Let's have another shave tomorrow morning. If you're not shaving, don't worry. Let's just talk about some other things tomorrow.